All right, well, let's get started and um, welcome. And so it's nice to see some familiar faces um, and it's really great to, um, to meet some new um, members of our alumni community. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Sharon Vogler and I've just recently been asked to um, move into a new role, um, an inaugural role for us here in the School of Business. And I'm currently the Director of Alumni Career Development. And in this position, I'm gonna be working with our alumni engagement team in the School of Business, Stacy Owen and Carrie Ross, to develop more resources and opportunities for our team to help our fierce um, alumni base um, with whatever is on their mind when it comes to careers. And so these, um, these webinars webinars are um, just one of those resources, which we will continue next semester. But this interview workshop is the last one I'm gonna be doing for the semester. We'll start them back up in late January and um, you'll um, see topics, um, again, a very wide range of topics from making a career pivot um, in mid-career, um, being able to, um, I think we're going to drill in more on resume writing um, and cover letter writing. Um, and then if you have ideas, we'd love to hear from you. And so if you've got an idea of a workshop that you think would be particularly helpful, please drop it in the chat or send one of us an email and we will put it um, on the list of possibilities for the spring semester. But today we're going to talk about interviewing and um, some strategies about how you should be approaching um, interviews, um, and then some tactical things on how you can execute um, interviews. So I'm going to talk about four, four main components, jumping ahead. That's how to prepare for an interview, how to execute and deliver value during an interview. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how to ask really good questions in an interview. And then I'll end with um, the proper um, ways to follow up post interview. And so I um, really enjoy um, interacting with, um, with the crowd. So at any time, please use your raise hand um, feature or drop something in the chat. Um, if you have a question or a comment or um, even have some commentary to add on experiences you've had, um, please don't be shy and um, dr either drop those in the chat or use the raise hand feature. And I'll try and um, pay attention to those. But I'm a one woman show today. So if I miss it, don't feel bad about interrupting me. Sound good? All right, well, let's get started. So your ability to prepare for an interview um, can, can mean a lot of things. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And depending on what type of interview um, can, can definitely, um, kind of give you some direction on the ways to prepare um, for whatever could possibly come your way. And so traditionally, the interviews usually fall into one of these three categories. You usually have a phone screen, some type of preliminary vetting opportunity. It's usually done with a recruiter or a member of the talent acquisition team. And in this, this is still an interview, just as important as any of the other interviews um, throughout the process, but really a phone interview or a phone screening, if you will, is the firm's opportunity to vet you um, or unvet you, right, for, the, for, um, for this particular job, because what they don't want to do and what you don't want to do is to waste time preparing for and doing an interview if your expectations and their are their expectations are not aligned. And so you'll get typical questions on why are you interested in the company, why or why you are not, um, um, why why you're hoping to leave a current. Um, opportunity that you're um, you're currently in, um, if you're not working, why you aren't working. Um, and so the the dreaded question, right, that we that you usually get from the very beginning, you should get, is along salary expectations. And so at that point, um, after a phone interview, a recruiter is going to decide yes or no. Yes, we want to move this candidate forward or no, 
were not aligned um, in um, our expectations. And then a lot of companies are going to this pre-recorded video interview. I know we do that here at Wake Forest. Any position um, that um, candidates are applying to um, after a review um, from a, a, a resume review and a screening from HR, um, every candidate will get um, a opportunity to talk about their application in a pre-recorded video interview. People hate them. I personally do not really enjoy sitting and watching a lot of pre-recorded um, answers to interview questions, but nonetheless, they are something that you need to think about and, 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 and prepare for. Um, and then a live interview, and a live interview can be, of course, the good old fashioned in person, um, but really a lot of the live interviews that we're seeing here um, in the School of Business and even outside of the School of Business are live interviews via Microsoft Teams or Zoom. And so I'm gonna give you some, some really good tips um, at the end on what to think about when it comes to these types of interviews. And so how do I prepare, right? I like to think of this as a school assignment, right? Imagine a professor has given you um, an assignment and that is to tell the story of you and um, in a professional lens. And so I think it's really helpful if you get out a good old fashioned, right, pen and paper or open a fresh Word document, title the Word document, interview preparation for insert firm, insert role, and really write your questions out. Think of it like an essay question, right? And I'm gonna give you some questions to think about, um, but write, writing them out. Um, it allows you to think um, more holistically about your experience. There's absolutely your experiences, but there's absolutely no way that anybody can predict exactly what they're going to ask you. But just by writing them out and giving them some thought and even passing them by um, a trusted colleague or mentor um, or a friend um, can, can really help you think about the way you talk about yourself in a meaningful way. And so I think it's important that you actually write them out and imagine somebody's gonna actually grade it. So you want it to be really thorough. But what you don't wanna do is memorize these answers. Kiss of death, right? If you're scripted and you are approaching the answers to these questions, um, like a speech um, that you've memorized. And so you want to avoid that. But I do like taking these notes and um, converting them into an outline or talking points that you can take with you into an interview. Or if you're on a Zoom call, such as we are today, having some notes, right? An outline. And I think if you can do this really well, it'll help ease some nerves, right? So people get really nervous when it comes to interviewing. Maybe you don't. I'm an expert, I think, interview prepper, and I still get very nervous when it comes to interviews because there's a lot on the line. And so um, taking it serious and doing this level of preparation will really help you um, approach the interview um, with your very best game. And so the more that you can prepare and the more you feel like you really understand the value that you bring to the workplace in this role, Hopefully that will um, ease some of your nerves. Um, but I like to treat it like a school assignment and think I'm gonna get a grade for this. And what kind of, you know, what kind of effort am I gonna put into this preparation? Because I wanna get an A and the A in this case equals a job, right? Also wanna mention um, AI and I know we're doing a session, um, I think later this week on um, using AI um, to forward your job search. And I pulled this straight off of our website. And um, one of my colleagues who um, is actually doing the, the webinar on AI has, has, has really done some great research. And she's even gone through and used chat GTP and tested some of these prompts. And so it's not cheating at all. It's really using your resources in a very impactful and intentional way that's only going to help. But if any of you have ever used ChatGPT, ChatGTP or any other AI, 
you know that it's only as helpful as the quality of prompts that you get, give it. So these prompts have been vetted. Um, I'll make sure that everyone that's on this um, call um, gets a um, copy of this slide deck. And so um, you use it, right? It's, it's a tool that's out there and it's free. You don't have to pay for chat, you know, any, any of these AI tools. They do want to commoditize it um, and give you an extra layer of resources um, if you do pay for um, a subscription level um, access to one of these tools, but we don't think that you necessarily need to. Everything's out there and the and the the product is, is just every day is getting smarter and smarter and smarter. And so um, definitely use it um, to your to, to help you prepare for. Um, what could possibly be asked, right? That's really hard for us to predict. And so what you really want to think about when you're preparing is, is really knowing yourself. And if you are having a hard time putting pen to paper and writing out your value proposition, the things that you have to bring to an employer, then uh, this is another really great opportunity to ask a mentor or ask a trusted um, advisor, a friend, um, a partner, a parent, a child, um, and be because they will be able to give you some language, right, that you can then um, start using when you're talking about yourself and the value that you bring to the organization. So really take a moment as you're preparing for an interview for the self-reflection and the self-awareness. Who am I? What am I really good at? How have my experiences um, demonstrated my ability to drive results? And as much as you can align that with their needs, the better. And so you want to research the employer and you can do a lot of different things to research the employer. Because really what you're trying to do here is you're trying to, you're, you know, a resume and a cover letter and LinkedIn, that sends signals of alignment, okay? And if the resume, cover letter, LinkedIn, if all those branding products have done their job to get you in front of decision makers, right, in the interview, um, then it's really your job to, in a very direct way, connect the dots and align yourself with the needs of the organization. And you're not gonna really understand the needs of the organization by just reading a, a job description. Yes, there's a lot of really helpful information in a job description, um, but there's so much more that you can do to dive deeper, to research the employer. One of the best things that I think that you can do is to talk to people who work there, right? Um, if you can find someone in the Wake Forest network that works for an organization that you're interviewing with, yes, they're, if you can get their attention, they're gonna help you. Now these big ginormous institutions, right? These huge firms, it's gonna be harder. The bigger the firm, the harder it is to really drill down to that specific business unit and that specific team. Um, but the, the more you can talk to people about, um, you know, the firm and the culture and the, the problems that the firm um, is facing, um, the stronger your preparation is going to be. I also love Glassdoor. It's an excellent resource. It's free. Um, just Glassdoor.com. Um, it gives reviews of companies um, and also, you know, it gets good reviews and it gives bad reviews. There's also an interview section on Glassdoor that can give you some really good insight on the types of questions that you might get um, depending on the actual role. And like I said, Glassdoor is free. It does want you to give it some baseline information about your background. So data is your access into the Glassdoor database. Wall Street Oasis is another one, especially if you're in the finance arena. Um, it gives really great um, information about, you know, very detailed on the employer level. And then when we think about preparing for an interview, um, you really need to practice. Um, winging it is, is not a good strategy. Even if you're the most charming and the most outgoing and the most well-spoken person, 
Um, we think it's really important that you practice. Practice with family and friends, practice in a mirror. I think one of the most powerful tools is to record yourself right on your telephone. Just sit the telephone up, hit record, and start talking um, and answering these types of questions and watch it back. It is enlightening what you can learn about yourself when you watch yourself back. We have tools here at Wake Forest that we, um, we use. Um, and if you want access to these tools, please let me know. Um, it's called inter the Interview Prep app. And Wake Forest has paid um, for faculty, students, and staff. And I think you can access it with your alumni email address. But it's a way that you can practice online interviewing those pre-recorded questions. Um, and you can watch yourself back um, on your computer. So if you'd like access to that, please, please let me know. Go to the next, there we go. All right. Um, so let's let's get let's get right to it, right? This this breakdown of, of what you need to be thinking about in a qualitative way. You're going to get asked these questions in an interview. So you need to think about them ahead of time. And everyone's going to get this question. If you've gotten it, please raise your hand. And I want to see five for five. And, and I'd love to be, actually, I don't think I'm going to be wrong, but I could be wrong. Who's gotten that question before? Tell me about yourself or walk me through your resume. Why are they asking this question? Why does everyone ask this question, right? because it is a really great way to open up right the and set the stage for for the entire interview but more importantly it gives you the microphone to tell your story okay and if you can tell it in a very succinct articulate way it's going to tell the interviewer two things it's going to number one tell them exactly why they should hire you right does your background match? Do your experiences match? Do your skills match? Secondly, and what I think is more importantly, it showcases your ability to tell a story. And this is the story of you. So every single um, inner, um, hiring company, every single hiring manager wants communication skills as the number one skill, regardless of function. Even teachers and nurses, Number one skill, communication, okay? Business analyst, data scientist, VP, director, manager, associate, everyone needs to have communication skills. So right off the bat, you have center stage to tell your story and showcase your communication skills. And you know yourself better than anyone else. So you should really nail this part. And it's going to, I'm, I'm going to break it down in just a second, um, but it's going to tell, um, it's going to tell a little bit about your background. It's high level, right? Things that you've accomplished, what direction, what goals you have. Um, it's, if it's done really well, it's going to tell the interviewer why you're interested in this particular function or, or industry, right? And then why you're interested in this firm. OK, and so I like to think about it. As a life skill, because you're constantly going to be asked this question, you're going to always be um, networking. Even when you get jobs, you have to network within the organization. You have to manage up and around um, the entire unit so that people know who you are. You have to advocate for yourself and your ability to tell your story in a very succinct way is a life skill. So we're here for it, right? Um, and it's also very foundational in most interviews. So three parts to this. It should, if you were, re, if you were given a speech, right? We're not gonna give speeches in interviews, but if you were to recite it, right? If you had your phone out and you recorded yourself with this tell me about yourself question, it should be one, one and a half to two minutes max. And I like to think of it in three separate buckets. 
The first bucket is where have you been, right? Who are you? Where are you from? Where did you go to school? Where are you currently working? Where have you worked that's relevant to this job? And then where are you at, right? What's the value that you bring to the organization? At this point, you want to incorporate both hard and soft skills that you have to offer, right? And why you're hoping to make a move. And then the third part is what you, how does this role align with your career interests? Let the person know exactly what you're looking for and your current plan. It's a, if it's done really well, it automatically at, answers the question, why this firm, why this industry, and why this role? And so here we go. I am going to read this because I want to make sure I hit all of um, the key parts that I just talked about. And so this is my sample introduction. My name is Sharon Vogler. I'm originally from Moxville, North Carolina, a small town right outside of Winston-Salem. I went to undergrad at Appalachian State University where I majored in studio art with a minor in marketing from the Walker School of Business. My husband of 25 years and I are officially empty nesters and enjoying the suburban life in Winston-Salem. I have had a very diverse career where I've worked in retail, financial services, healthcare, and higher education industries in roles like sales, operations, human resources, advisor, and director. For the last 12 years, I have worked in my dream job that I didn't even know existed as a career advisor at Wake Forest University in the School of Business. At Wake Forest, I've used my previous experience, exceptional networking ability, and influencing skills to partner with students on their employment outcomes. It has been an amazing and very rewarding journey. Now, I'm looking to make a geographic move and relocate to the Charleston area. When I saw the Director of Career Services at the College of Charleston, I knew immediately this was my next move. This role aligns perfectly with my background of managing high performing teams and providing students with resources, encouragement and motivation to accomplish their career goals. As Director of Career Services at Wake Forest, I've executed large scale, high profile projects, such as adding an online career hub and designing and executing a career management course. I'm eager to learn more about your needs and how I will add value at the College of Charleston. Okay, I timed myself when I was preparing um, this um, presentation and I was right at um, a minute, minute and a half, um, closer to um, two minutes. And so um, I'll hope you guys will use this as a really good outline. Um, like I said before, you don't want to memorize it, but I think I've hit all the key components. Where have I been? Where am I from? Where am I at? And why am I looking to make a move, like looking to the future? And I have aligned myself directly with the needs um, of the College of Charleston. And so fun fact, this is my dream next job, right? I want to retire and have a um, a semi-retired life down in Charleston. And if a director of career services were to open up, I probably would jump at the chance um, to, to relocate down to that area. Um, and so for today, um, here in Winston-Salem, really enjoying um, being an empty nester with, with, with all of the great things that come with that. All right. So, so, so storytelling is a very com important component of preparing for an interview. And like I mentioned earlier, your ability to communicate your value and tell a story in a compelling, a compelling way will showcase your communication skills. We, we teach, we didn't invent it. People think that we've invented it and we didn't. Um, this star method. And I add an extra R at the end of star I like to get uh, my clients to think about the fact that I have two R's in my name for some random reason that my mom decided to put two R's in Sharon. I add a second R and we have two R's in star. So let me break it down for you. I don't know what happened there. We boom, 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 boom. 
food. Okay. And so um, this is the baseline methodology for all behavioral types of interviews. And that is to compose answers or stories, right, using the STAR method. And um, it's, you know, it, it's compromised of five, five um, units. The first unit is the situation, where you were, what position you had, what kind of responsibilities that you were given. And then the task, what kind of task were you given um, and what kind of obstacles did you need to overcome? Kind of setting the situation, right? Setting up the, the scene, setting the scene, if you will. The action piece is the, is the, should be the longest part. And that's two to three, no more than four actionable things that you did to accomplish um, this particular challenge or task that was at, right, that, that was being asked. And then um, the results, right, the results of your work, and it not, might not necessarily be, you know, that you got an A or you got the bid or you, um, you know, you got promoted. Um, the results could be something maybe a little bit more in the lines of a life lesson. And then that second R is to repeat the value. And that's um, what you're going to do there is you're going to answer the question. So if they ask you a question about conflict resolution, and if this story has been developed in a really impactful way, then it's also going to talk about additional qualities and additional attributes that you can bring to the table. So it may also talk about resiliency and teamwork. So you want to directly say that out loud. And it sounds something like this. So you talk about the situation when I was a um, sales um, director at TRC Staffing. I worked on a contract um, with a very large um, manufacturer of airplane parts. Um, it was called BE Aerospace. And I had worked on this um, sales pipeline for years. And it came down to the, you know, to the, the moment when I um, was able to get an RFP. Um, the legal people that I was working with at TRC um, kicked back the, the proposal and said that they would not pay um, they they could not wait 120 days for the accounts payable to cycle back around, meaning um, we were going to do some work for this company and then they were going to um, they were going to pay us in 120 days. And in the staffing world, we have payroll that we had to to fill weekly. And so we needed to get that money quicker than 120 days. So we lost. I had to walk away from that opportunity. That was a $40 million a year opportunity for myself, which means I would have gotten a bonus that would have probably paid my mortgage for a year. So I was so upset, right? And I was a little bit angry. I was a whole lot angry, right? And so instead of, right, getting angry, instead of showcasing my emotions in a very outward way, I was able to reflect on the situation and the next time I was approached with something like this, I made sure that I understood the terms before we got in too deep. OK, so this is a good example of how I can manage conflict, that I have resiliency and grit and that I am aware of how contracts and accounts payable work. All right. So you, hopefully that was a good example of how I was able to add additional layers on to the answer so that it could cover multiple questions that I could possibly get. Because, right, here's some common topics that we, we think about when we develop these star stories. And if a star story is developed really well, it will, um, you'll have the ability to talk about many different attributes, okay? But these are just some common topics. And like I said, it's impossible for us to predict. And so if the stories really developed well enough, you um, can use it um, no matter what type of question that you might get. Why does it keep going back to the beginning?
don't know, but we will rally here. All right. All right. So this is an example that I used um, for um, a gym membership where we talk about the situation, the action, the result. And then again, we've repeated the value. So this was a mistake, right? That um, someone made when they were um, selling gym membership. And they misquoted, right, um, what it would cost this potential member. And, um, you know, they tried to fix it, but they were, weren't able to without a manager. And so they used their communication skills, right, to thank them for their patience. And then they quickly reached out to the manager to resolve the issues, right? And the results were that the manager was able to help and requote, get a quote back to the new member. The member actually joined despite the mistake, right? So that's a great result. And then we're going to repeat that value. So you can see from this example that I um, really learned to pay attention to detail in a more meaningful way, that honesty is always the best policy. Um, I know how to respond when mistakes happen without getting too flustered, and I'm not afraid to ask for help, right? So they ask about a mistake that I've talked about right? These four other things that are really beneficial um, in the workplace. All right, I'm not going to let this happen again with this arrow down. All right, so um, I love a good chart. So I like to approach um, developing these star stories and thinking about just really developing four. Develop four really strong stories. And here um, I've, I've I've just kind of given myself a note. I'm going to use the time I worked at the gym. I'm going to use my internship. I'm going to talk about when I worked in the student government. And I'm going to talk about a time I had to teach myself Microsoft Power BI. Okay? Chart it out. And then think about, right, all of these different qualities and all these different topics that that story really showcases super helpful, right? Because if you're talking about leadership and then you can also talk about problem solving, initiative and adaptability, then you're just layering on more and more reasons that they should hire you. Okay. <clears throat> so you're going to get difficult questions and um, you need to anticipate and prepare for those. And two of the most common are, why are you looking to leave your company? Why are you not working? Um, another question that people hate to think about um, are this, is this weakness question? Like what, what's, um, you know, give me an example of a time that you failed or um, what do you think your greatest strengths are? And they'll follow that right up with what are your weaknesses? You've got to think about them. You're going to get asked, ask them, raise your hand if you've been asked those questions before right? It's just a part of interviewing. And it's not that they want to, um, it's, it's not like they're trying to ask you questions that are going to trip you up. When you think about answering these difficult questions, you really need to think about um, telling um, or answering them using the sandwich method, right? And so we're going to start with something really positive. We're going to talk about maybe something that's not as positive, right? Answering their question. And then we're gonna end it, right? With um, a little bit more positivity. And so um, this is a good example that my colleague came up with about being kind of like an over, an overthinker. Um, and so again, um, you know, use this sandwich method, but know that when they ask you, the weakness and the failure question that they're really trying to understand how you use your resources, how you learn, right? And how you grow. And so that it doesn't continue to happen over and over again. Okay. I'm going to pause there and see if anybody has any questions before I keep going and take a sip of water. All right, no questions. Let's keep going. All right, like, like I said earlier, in an interview, it is your job, 
right? To align yourself with the firm's needs and provide examples, specific examples on how your experience will add value to the organization. What you want to avoid is talking about things very broadly, like your, your philosophical ideas on leadership, right? They don't want to hear your, 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 your philosophical ideas on leadership. They want a specific example of a time that you had to use your, in, your leadership skills to influence others. OK, and so um, so so definitely avoid talking in very broad terms and use an example, even if they don't ask for an example. Think of every opportunity you can to add an example. You also want to think about less about what's in it for you. OK, and there's a lot on the line for you. This is your livelihood, right? Depending on your personal situation. You might be the only one providing income for yourself or your family. So there's a lot on the line um, and the, the, you know, for you specifically. But really challenge yourself in an interview to think about what's in it for the firm. Okay? You want to work in a place where you are valued, where you have a voice, where you can have a work-life balance, and where you can make a lot of money and you can learn a lot of things, okay? Instead, think about it in terms of, I have all this experience, I have all these skills, you need someone in your organization that can do these things, I've done them in the past, or I have transferable skills that I'm gonna communicate through these stories that are going to add value to the organization. Lean in on that job description and any research and insights so you have. Use their language. If the job description talks a lot about collaboration, use that word. If they use the word teamwork, use that word. It means the same thing, right? Teamwork, collaboration. If they talk a lot about stakeholder communications, you need to use that language. Okay, and be direct. It's okay to use um, language like I am perfect for this role because and I align with the organization's need because I have this in my background. Okay, do not be afraid to be direct and pay attention to the details. A lot of people lose it here, guys. They lose it. You've got to dress the way you've got to dress appropriately, wear a suit or jacket, even if you're virtual. OK, um, if it's a very laid back work environment, very, you know, like Gen Z, you know, where they're wearing flip flops and shorts and bringing their dog to work. Um, do still right. You need to at minimum wear a suit jacket. OK, even if you don't wear a whole suit, you need to wear a tailored jacket. It, 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 it sends the signal that you are polished and you're put together and you're serious. OK, if it's virtual, you need to make sure your technology is working. Do a trial run. If you're used to Zoom and you've got to switch to Teams, find somebody who has Teams and do a trial run to make sure your integrated camera right, is talking to teams like it talks to Zoom, okay? If you're using those terrible earbuds, I can't stand those things. I just don't think the, the um, audio is as clear, okay? Um, and so if you are using them, though, you need to make sure that they're working and that the Bluetooth, right, is working with all of your technology. And you want to make sure that there are no distractions, okay? Don't do this in a coffee shop on the busiest street in New York City. Like it's not going to go well. Okay. You need to find a very quiet place with no distractions. You need to remember that whether you're in person or you're online, that 67% um, of your communication comes from nonverbal. Okay. I've been talking with my hands a lot. I also try to lean in when I'm really trying to get my point across, like physically lean in. If I'm sitting back like this and I'm talking, 
and I'm trying to get you to know like how to prepare for an interview. All right, that's kind of not as dynamic as if I lean forward and I express with my face and my hands and my nonverbals that I'm really passionate about interview preparation. Hopefully you're listening a little bit more just by some of those nonverbals. And again, this is really where a lot of people lose it. They do all this preparation. They're perfectly aligned and, and um, definitely qualified for the job. They get in, they're so nervous or they're trying to be somebody that they're not. And the energy level is, and or the energy level is really low. And so my very, 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 very best advice is to be authentic, be yourself, be Paul. You want to be the best representation of yourself, right? And be likable, especially when you get into the third, fourth round and final rounds. They know you can do the job. At that point, they're just trying to figure out, are you going to fit into this unit? Is this someone we want to bring into our family? Are they going to add value? Are they going to solve problems? Are they, do they have a background um, and do they have a personality, right? That best represents our brand, all right? So you really need to think about being likable and then smile, right? Find the most authentic, positive energy you have and bring it to the interview. Even the phone screen, with the HR person, even on a pre-recorded um, video, um, we call it Hire View or Spark Hire, right? Where you're pre-recording these interview um, answers, like bring this positive energy and you will move through the application and interview process exactly how you're supposed to be, but you need to pay attention to those details. Your ability to ask questions is a really important part of this interview, okay? Um, and I challenge my clients to really think about asking thoughtful questions, but you've really got to know who your audience is. So your ability to ask questions in an interview is two things, right? Number one, it showcases the level of preparation and research that you did for this role. You want to walk away from that interview or hang up the phone and you want those interviewers to say, wow, that person was really prepared. I could tell they really did their homework. They are in it, right? So your ability to ask a really thoughtful question will showcase that you've done an extra an extra, an extra, three layers of extra preparation that no one else did, okay? If you know your interviewer's name, it is perfectly acceptable and to your advantage to look them up on LinkedIn. It's not creepy. It's not stalking. When I've been interviewing people and I see that they viewed my LinkedIn profile, I'm impressed, if I'm interviewing someone, this actually happened. I was interviewing someone and that it was going to be a, um, a level above me. So I was interviewing for um, someone who um, would be like almost two layers above me. And they said in the interview, they mentioned something that was on my LinkedIn profile that aligned with their background. And my jaw literally dropped to the floor. I'm like, wow, wow. Not only did they do an extra layer of research, but they were able to, to, to kind of align themselves, right, with some of the things that are really important to me and some of the values that I have. And so it really showcases your level of preparation. But if you're talking to an HR person, right, you don't want to ask them questions about their 1099 or their, their annual report. Like, don't ask questions just for the sake of asking questions to showcase that you did all this research if you know for a fact that person can't answer that question, okay? The second reason it's important that you really think about the kind of questions you ask in an interview is because you want to interview them. This is your opportunity to turn the table, right? 
and ask them questions that are gonna allow you to make a very informed decision on if this is right for you, okay? And so you want to ask them questions that are important and, and what's important to you may not be important to me, but we encourage you to think about culture and if it's a, a good fit, but you don't wanna ask what's the culture like at the firm because every team is different, every location is different, and it's, it's, it's almost like a, a, a blanketed statement that you really, you really shouldn't ask it that way, but it's, right, it's important. And so how do you ask the question about culture without asking it that directly? So I like having these back pocket questions kind of ready to go, no matter who I'm interviewing with. And so it would sound something like this, like, can you give me an example of a project that you've recently worked on where you were able to learn the most about a tech, some kind of technology or some kind of software platform. Asking a question like that will get them to talk about their experience in a really meaningful way. And let's be honest, people love to talk about themselves. So this section is usually towards the end of um, the interview. So if you can get them to talk about their experience, um, why they chose the firm, why they made a move from X firm to Y firm, or how their major, they, if they majored in Spanish, if you could tell from their LinkedIn profile that they majored in Spanish, how is their Spanish major um, you know, useful in um, their, their, the career that they've had at XYZ firm, okay? People love to talk about themselves. So you want that kind of be the end, right? How you're able to, to wrap things up and they're going to feel really good about the exchange. Um, and um, again, that's advantage, advantage you. So ask really good questions and guys, just Google it. You can Google it and you can come up with resource after resource after resource of really good questions to ask in an interview. So always have, I like to have two I really prepared questions and two, I need to learn more about this firm to see if it's a good fit for me question. So four questions, think them through. <clears throat> when, when, you're, when you're done, right? When the interview is starting to naturally wrap up, right? The clothes, you know, they're shuffling papers, there's signals that we're entering like the final stage of this interview. I challenge you all to think about your closing remarks, right? And it's one, two sentences max. I call, I call it closing strong. You want to close this interview out in a very impactful way. And it sounds something like this. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really learned a lot about the product manager position at Credit Karma. And I know that my background working with this mortgage lender where I worked on products, just like the products that Credit Karma um, will have me work on aligns perfectly with this opportunity. I'm really looking forward to next steps in the process. Can you give me an idea of what I can expect next? Okay, so we're asking for the job without actually asking for the job. I like to get people to think about it like this. If you've ever been on a first date before, right? Um, where you go to dinner and you've had an amazing conversation. It was very effortless. It was very organic, very authentic. And the date starts to end, right? And the person that you that has asked you out on this date just leaves you, you know, right at the door of the uh, restaurant, gets in their Uber and just leaves. And you're sitting there thinking, did they like me? I like them. I thought that went really well. Why did they leave so soon? Are they going to call me? I don't know, right? But instead, if that date starts to end and both parties, right, are interested, um, 
that person would be like, I really enjoyed our time together. I loved learning about your family adventures out west to, to Colorado last summer. I'm really looking forward to, 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 to spending more time with you. Can I get your number? Can I ask you out again? Right? Then you, you leave the date and you're just, you're kind of skipping around a little bit. You're like, that went so great. I'm going to get asked on another date. I'm so excited, right? So think about this in the same way. You want to close strong. You want to express gratitude. You want to state your interests. Try to align yourself again with why you think you're perfect for the job and then ask for next steps. I want you to ask me out again. Ask me out. Here's my number. Let's go. Okay. So you're going to close strong and then more gratitude, more gratitude. You want to send thank you emails via, right? Via email. You want to send these thank you notes via email as soon as you can get back in front of a computer where you can concentrate on writing this note, but less than 24 hours, right? You really want to get these as soon as possible because let's think about this. If they have had four back-to-back -back interviews on a Friday afternoon, one after another, you went at three o'clock and you knew there was another person coming in at four, um, and then you left the interview and you didn't write a thank you note until Monday, they may have already decided who was going to get the job on Friday afternoon. So you want to get that thank you note sent before everybody else does, okay? And not everybody is doing this. But Wake Forest, this is the Wake Forest way. We're going to get those emails sent as soon as possible. You're going to send an email to everyone that you met individually, okay? There, it's not going to be a copy and paste. You're going to write a very short, succinct thank you note, right, that expresses gratitude, that connects the dots and asks for the job, right, um, to everyone that you interviewed with, with some kind of takeaway from the conversation. And don't forget to thank the recruiter who set this all up. They're a decision maker in this process. And the way you treat the recruiter is just as important as the way you treat um, the rest of the interview team. So that's all I have. Erica has a question. Perfect. Erica, why don't you go um, off of mute and ask your question? Yeah. Um, it, how do you actually get everyone's contact? info? Great question. You might not always have it, right? One way that you can get it is to look at the team's invite, right? If you're on Zoom um, or if they send you a calendar invite, you can sometimes find their names and their email addresses um, on the invite. Another way is to ask the recruiter for them. If the recruiter is protecting it and kind of is the gatekeeper, Tell her why you want their email addresses and ask her if it's okay. If she still won't give them to you, ask her if she would then send them to the recruiting team on your behalf. If you have the recruiter's email address, you might can figure out the rest of the team's email address by looking at the, the naming convention um, that the firm has used for her email. And then you can also, um, there's, there's a couple of um, online resources um, that you can also use. Um, I can't think of them right now. Um, we use Career Shift here at Wake Forest, um, and it allows us to, to get um, email addresses, work email addresses from people, but it's not always, it's not always current. Another way is that if you are connected to them on LinkedIn, you can look at their contact information on LinkedIn. Anybody else have any ideas on how to get email addresses when you don't have them? Yep. I love a handwritten note, guys. I love it. But snail mail is, right, it's so last year, but so 10 years ago. Um, it takes it takes long to get them, probably longer than, the, you know, the, the firm is willing to wait. Um, but guys, if I don't get a thank you note after I've interviewed someone, they do not get the job, even if they were the dean's daughter, right? Because this is a practice, right, that we instill in all of the students that we support here at Wake Forest. And so 
um, you know, not only do I make sure I get a thank you note, I make sure it's written really well um, too. Other questions? That was a great question, Erica. Thank you. All right, um, be on the outlook for some more really great programming. If you have ideas on programs you'd like to see us do, please send me a note, send Stacy or um, Carrie a note. Um, we'd love your ideas and um, um, it's been a pleasure. And so um, right at um, one o'clock. Um, and so I hope it was helpful for everyone um, and look forward to your feedback and have a great afternoon. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sharon. You are so welcome, Robin. How are things going? I'm going well. Um, I've really been enjoying these sessions. Um, just <laughs> going to take a job offer for now. But um, I want to get my perfect dream job like you. I love the way you describe your, you're my inspiration. So thanks for what you're doing. It's out there. It's out there, Robin. Um, stay close to us and um, let us know how we can help. Thank you. Bye-bye.